Hello and welcome to the Testing Hypotheses about a Population Proportion pre-lab. This week's pre-lab will have you explore an online statistical applet instead of using R Commander. The link to this applet can be found in the video description below or in your pre-lab assignment. Our goal with using this applet is to help you understand and visualize what a p-value really means. Let's start by taking a look at the instructions listed above the visualization tool. We notice that this applet illustrates the p-value for a significance test involving one population proportion p. This is perfect, since the unit we are currently studying is hypothesis testing for one population proportion. As we continue to read the instructions, we can see that the normal curve shows the sampling distribution of the sample proportion p-hat when the null hypothesis is true. In other words, this shows us what values are possible for a sample proportion and how often they would occur if the null hypothesis were actually true. The instructions also tell us that the blue arrows underneath the curve show us the direction of the extreme, that is, the values of the sample proportion that show more evidence against the null hypothesis and thus in favor of the alternative hypothesis. The yellow shaded area under the curve will represent the probability of getting the sample proportion we actually observe or more extreme under the null hypothesis model. So this area corresponds to our p-value. A large p-value implies that our sample proportion was not very extreme or unusual to see if the null hypothesis were actually true, which generally leads us to not reject that the null hypothesis is true. A small p-value implies that our sample proportion was indeed quite extreme or very unusual to see if the null hypothesis were actually true, which generally leads us to reject the null hypothesis. The blue box in the top right hand corner of the page also provides step-by-step -step instructions for how to fill in the values needed to use this applet. I highly recommend reading through these instructions after watching the video as you turn to completing your pre-lab assignment. On the applet, we will notice that there are many out inputs that we can give. We can define the null hypothesis value and the direction of our alternative hypothesis. Let's use the following background to demonstrate how to use this applet. You and your friend are about to play a game which involves flipping a coin. If the coin lands heads, you win, but if the coin lands tails, your friend wins. So you hope that the coin is biased in favor of heads. You want to assess if the probability of heads, that is, the population proportion of heads, p, is greater than 0.5. You decide to use a significance level of 10%. This means that we would define our null hypothesis H0 P equal to 0.5 and our alternative hypothesis HA P greater than 0.5. Then below we need to provide a sample size. Let's pretend that we are going to flip the coin 50 times. So N equals 50. Finally, I notice that there are two options available to me. I have the data and the observed x equals blank, or the truth about the population proportion p is blank. The first option allows me to enter the sample data results. So for example, say you do flip the coin 50 times and observe a total of 34 heads. I would type in x equals 34 and then click outside of the box. Now let's look at the picture. We see that 34 out of 50 heads of flips of the coin is 0.68 or 68%. If the coin were really fair, we would expect half of the flips to result in heads. That is where the null hypothesis distribution is centered. The area, the yellow area shows the probability of getting 68% that we observed or values that are even more extreme or larger if the coin were really fair. This probability is the p-value, which is very small, only 0.005, or about 5%. So seeing 34 out of 50 heads for a sample proportion of 0.68 provides very strong evidence against the null hypothesis that the coin is fair and in favor of the alternative theory that the coin is based biased towards heads. Notice that we are also given the value of the z-test statistic, which is 2.0. 5, 4, 6. This is the standard score or z-score if we standardize the sample proportion value of 0.68 assuming the null hypothesis is true. Recall that our significance level is set to 0.10.
This level represents how unusual the results need to be in order for us to go against the null hypothesis. Since our p-value is indeed so small and much less than 0.10, we are, would reject that the coin is fair. Okay, so now suppose that we flip the coin again 50 times and the resulting number of heads is 29. We type in set 29 and click outside of the box and we see that 29 out of 50 flips is a sample rate of 0.58 or 58% and a Z test statistic of 1.31. Now this sample is not so unusual under the idea of the coin being fair. The corresponding p-value is 0.129 or 12.9%, which now is greater than the 10% significance level we require. Thus in this case, we would not be able to reject the coin is fair, and we would say our decision was fail to reject H0. Finally, let's look at the second option, the truth about the population P is P equal to blank. This will allow us to pretend that we know the true value for the population proportion P, and then simulate from this known distribution. So if we keep the value of 0.5 here, we are saying that the null hypothesis is really true that the coin is really fair. And then we need to click on new sample and a random sample of size 50 will be generated. Or in our case, a fair coin will be flipped 50 times. We are shown the results and we can see whether we would correctly fail to reject H0 or incorrectly reject H0. As I click new sample many times, you will notice that the p-value changes. This makes sense. Every sample I get will be a little bit different, and because of this, the sample proportion or the p-hat value will vary slightly. This is all I have to show you on this applet. I encourage you to review the instructions above and have fun using the applet to, create, to complete your pre-lab assignment.